after more than 100 days of congressional investigations. Just earlier today, the House Oversight Committee dropped a bombshell new report. You can see it up on screen for yourself, detailing how Joe Biden's family received over $10 million in payments coming largely from foreign entities. And then furthermore, how the Biden family then used a giant network of shell companies to obfuscate where the money was actually coming from. However, oddly enough, Despite the fact that this report is based on hard evidence, including things like bank records and company documents, it appears that there is a complete media blackout. Because no matter which news outlet you went to today, be it The New York Times, CNN, MSNBC, ABC, Newsweek, The Washington Post, Vice, The Huffington Post, BBC News, all of them had the story nowhere to be seen. It's kind of amazing when you consider what the freedom of the press actually means when our supposedly free press here in America just seems to run cover for the administration. Regardless, though, let's dive into the actual findings of this report. And just as an aside, I really hope that in today's episode, you take a quick moment to smash those like and subscribe buttons, which quite literally forces the YouTube algorithm to share this episode out to ever more people. Because honestly, that might be the only way that people have access to this type of information. Because again, this media blackout is real. Now, to start with, earlier today in the morning, the House Oversight Committee held a short conference wherein they both dropped the report and explained what they found. Here's a brief clip from that conference giving you a high-level overview of what this Biden investigation actually yielded. I want to be clear. This committee is investigating President Biden and his family's shady business deals that capitalized on Joe Biden's public office and risked our country's national security. This committee has a duty to ask questions and pursue the facts no matter where they take us. Through the committee's investigation, we intend to provide transparency to the American people and reach legislative solutions. In only four months since obtaining subpoena authority, we have made astonishing progress. Today, we'll talk about that progress. First, we want to discuss information the committee has learned since our last press conference in November. New information investigators have uncovered regarding the transfer of money from foreign entities to the Biden family. And it's very, it's very, very frustrating. We have now been able to clearly see that the Biden's associates, like Rob Walker, Eric Sherman, as has been discussed, created at least 16 companies while Joe Biden was vice president of the United States. 16 companies created while he was vice president. Now the list is 20 and as we continue our investigation that list is growing and like i said before the question is to serve what purpose and the purpose of all these companies being created is to conceal money that the biden family has been gaining gain, gaining because joe biden has been sitting at the upper echelon of our politics for almost five decades that is the entire purpose here here's an example of what i mean you have Rosemont Seneca Partners, Rosemont Seneca Advisors, Rosemont Seneca Technology Partners, RSP Holdings, RSTP2 Alpha, RSTP2 Bravo, Rosemont Seneca Thornton, Rosemont Seneca Bohai. I want to make sure I pronounce it right. Bohai, B-O-H-A-I. And the list goes on and on. Cycling through this many companies serves no legitimate purpose. And as somebody who actually worked in banking, I did that long before I came here. Whenever there was like this many companies just laying all over the place and you see wire transfers and cashier checks over here going to random members of the family for no apparent purpose at the size and velocity at which all of this was being conducted, the only logical conclusion of a financial professional is you are concealing money. Now, specifically, the banking and other records that they were able to uncover, they show what, what can only be described as a complex money laundering scheme, which involved millions of dollars, many of them coming from foreign countries, given to all these different shell companies, which then wound up getting into the pockets of different Biden family members. And in terms of those family members, take a listen as this member of Congress lays out all the people that they found receiving some of these foreign transactions. Joe Biden's son, Joe Biden's brother, Joe Biden's brother's wife, Hunter Biden's girlfriend or Bo Biden's widow, however you wanted to write that, Hunter Biden's ex-wife, Hunter Biden's current wife, 
and three children of the president's son and the president's brother. So we're talking about grandchild, a grandchild. That's odd. Most people that work hard every day, his grandchild doesn't get a wire from a foreign national or anything like that. So Now, this 36-page report, which was just dropped this morning by the House Oversight Committee, and you can see it once again up on your screen, it lays out the findings point by point. And in fairly great detail, this report shows how, in their 100-day-long investigation, Congress was able to uncover thousands of bank records, as well as the legal documents for nearly a dozen LLC companies that were established by the Biden family in order for them to receive payments from private clients, from corporations, as well as from foreign governments, including from places like China, as well as Romania. Here is part of what the report says in this regard. Quote, Biden family members and business associates created a web of over 20 companies. Most were limited liability companies formed during Joe Biden's vice presidency. Bank records show the Biden family, their business associates, and their companies received over $10 million from foreign nationals companies. The committee has identified payments to Biden family members from foreign companies while Joe Biden served as vice president and after he left public office. Then the report went on to detail how after Joe Biden left the vice presidency, the money just kept rolling in. But it was rolling in in a way that made it hard to track the actual source of it. Here's what it says, quote, Despite creating many companies after Vice President Biden took office, the Biden family used business associates' companies to receive millions of dollars from foreign companies. After foreign companies sent money to business associates' companies, the Biden family received incremental payments over time to different bank accounts. These complicated financial transactions appear to conceal the source of the funds and reduce the conspicuousness of the total amounts made into the Biden bank accounts. Chinese nationals and companies with significant ties to Chinese intelligence and the Chinese Communist Party Party, hid the source of the funds by layering domestic limited liability companies. Now, on this program, on Facts Matter, we have in previous episodes already covered some of the publicly known examples of this alleged influence peddling, such as when Hunter Biden would fly to places like China and Mexico with his father aboard Air Force Two. While there, he would then meet with his quote unquote business partners, and then magically, large sums of money would just start flowing. There are many examples of something like this happening in places like China, Mexico, Ukraine, as well as Kazakhstan. However, there is a great new example that came out as a part of this investigation, which really paints, you can say in stark relief, how this alleged influence peddling worked in practice. The example given involved Romania. And here's how the House Oversight Committee, just this morning, described what took place. M many of the wire payments occurred while Joe Biden was vice president and leading the United States efforts in these countries. First instance, while Vice President Biden was lecturing Romania on anti-corruption policies, in reality, he was a walking billboard for his son and family to collect money. Hunter Biden and his associates capitalized on a lucrative financial relationship with a Romanian national who was under investigation for and later convicted of corruption in Romania, the Bidens received over $1 million for the deal, and 16 of the 17 payments to their associates' account that funneled the Bidens' money occurred while Joe Biden was vice president. In fact, the money stops flowing from the Romanian national soon after Joe Biden leaves the vice presidency. This is a pattern of influence peddling. Now, for many months now, both Joe Biden and the White House have denied any of these allegations. In fact, within this report, they cited an earlier statement of denial that was made by Joe Biden when some of these allegations, specifically the ones about China, first began coming to light. Here's specifically what Joe Biden is quoted as saying as a part of this report. Quote, my son, meaning Hunter, has not made money in terms of this thing, what you are talking about, China. I have not had, the only guy who has made money from China is this guy, meaning Donald Trump. He's the only one. Nobody else has made money from China. However, the bank records appear to paint a, you can say, slightly different story. According to the Congressional Oversight Report, quote, the bank records refute President Biden's statement. To date, President Biden has continued to deny that his family received money from China, despite bank records proving otherwise. In 2017 alone, bank records show President Biden's family and their related companies received millions of dollars from Chinese foreign nationals companies. This amount does not include payments from Ukraine, 
Kazakhstan, Mexico, Romania, Oman, or other foreign business deals the committee is investigating. Furthermore, according to publicly available information that's already out there, it appears that the money within the Biden family, including the Biden extended family, is rather fungible, meaning it easily moves from one pocket to the other. And in terms of what this actually looks like in practice, well, Mr. Peter Schweizer, who is the author of the book Red Handed, described the way that the money moves within the Biden family this way in a recent interview. I mean, what's interesting, and the emails make this clear, is that within the Biden family, money is fungible. It moves around. Um, and there's a lot of evidence for this. Some of this is Hunter Biden himself. Uh, you know, there's messages in the uh, laptop where he's communicating with his daughter. His daughter's in, the in her 20s. She's asking Hunter for money. Any parent who has a child in their 20s probably has had this kind of conversation. Uh, and Hunter basically replies, look, I don't have a lot of money right now. Um, you're going to have to kind of stand on your own. But, you know, going forward, as you get older, don't worry. I'm not going to ask you to do what pop, meaning Joe Biden, has asked me to do, which is turn over half my money. Uh, so this is Hunter Biden saying uh, that he goes out and makes money, but some of that money is going to his dad or is going to other family members, and that's his role in the family. Now, you could look at this and say, well, this is maybe this is hyperbole. Hunter's having a bad day. He's frustrated. As you dig further into the laptop, you see that Hunter Biden is collecting this money from overseas, from China, from Ukraine and elsewhere, uh, but that he's also paying his father's monthly bills. Um, that's interesting because it not only shows that Joe Biden's a beneficiary of these foreign deals, it's actually illegal. Uh, politicians are not allowed to have family members subsidize their lifestyles by paying their bills. Mm -hmm. But in addition to monthly bills, Hunter Biden's also making payments on renovations on Joe Biden's home in Delaware when he's having work done on the house. So it's very clear that Joe Biden is a direct beneficiary of these deals. When he leaves the vice presidency in January of 2017, other foreign deals are in the works, including with CEFC, the Chinese energy company. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where the email that the Hunter's going to hold 10 percent for the big guy uh, comes into play. So after he left the vice presidency, he was going to start to be juiced in to some of these overseas deals. And the truly, I think, scary part on top of that is the plans were for Joe Biden to actually share office space in Washington, D.C. with some of these Chinese companies and with his son. The only reason that didn't take place is the FBI arrested executives from CEFC. Mm -hmm. And then I think the handwriting was so on the wall uh, that they had to step away from it. So this was the Biden family working very closely with these entities. Hunter would, Hunter would collect the money. Some of the money would go to James Biden. But Joe Biden himself was absolutely a financial beneficiary of these deals. And so with millions of dollars floating around these 20 different shell companies, well, it's not exactly rocket science regarding what was very likely happening. However, despite this new congressional report and the plethora of other information that's already out there, if you went out right now and asked most people on the street in this country, they would have no idea. That's because what appears to be happening is a coordinated effort between the Biden administration and media outlets to effectively black out the story. You see, in what must have been a total coincidence, at almost exactly the same moment when this report dropped this morning, the Department of Justice simultaneously announced the arrest of Congressman George Santos. Now, that is an astounding coincidence. They announced the arrest of George Santos on the very same morning, at almost the exact same moment that the results of this 100-day-long investigation were made public. And like clockwork, as I mentioned at the top of the episode, no matter which news outlet you turn to, whether it was The New York Times, whether it was CNN, MSNBC, ABC, Newsweek, The Washington Post, Vice, The Huffington Post, BBC News, no matter which one you went to, they were all covering the story of George Santos, which, granted, is an important story. However, a 36-page congressional report with bank records showing millions of dollars flowing to Joe Biden's family during his tenure in office it doesn't make the cut. It's not important enough to put at the top of the website or even to report on it in any meaningful way. That is what we in the industry call a media blackout. Very cool. Regardless, if you'd like to go deeper into this report for yourself, which I would highly recommend that you do since it's very, you can say, rationally laid out and it ex explains what they found step by step, I'll throw a link to the PDF version of it. It'll be down in the description box below. And then lastly, if you've ever been watching our program and then you're thinking to yourself, man, 
I wish Roman would post three extra episodes of Facts Matters every single week. Well, you're in luck because we do. Over on Epic TV, the no censorship video platform that we specifically built, I publish somewhere between two or three exclusive episodes that you will not be finding here on YouTube. Usually because the topics that I cover over there are too spicy for the YouTube algorithms and too spicy for the soy latte sipping YouTube Silicon Valley censors that have their fingers on the censor button. And so if you'd like to check out some awesome Facts Matter episodes on things like mRNA vaccines being used in food, and how the EU is about to shut down 3,000 Dutch farmers and kick them out of Europe, about how the death penalty has recently been passed for child abusers in several different states, about how a doctor was forcibly removed from a hospital meeting after he dared to talk about his experience with a certain medication. If you'd like to check out my many interviews with Dr. Robert Malone, Dr. Peter Marcolo, or if you would just like to support the work that we do here at the Epic Times while at the same time being part of an exclusive community, well, then check out Epic TV. The link will be right there at the very, very, very top of the description box below. And they're running a super good promo right now. Just for a single dollar, you can try out Epic TV, see if you like it, which I know you will, and you can binge watch all the great content that's on, on there, including a bunch of documentaries that quite literally took months to put together. Again, the link will be right there at the very, very, very top of the description box. I hope you check it out. And then until next time, I'm your host, Roman from the Epic Times. Stay informed. Most importantly, stay free. Mm -hmm.